Okay, so we're ready to start our first painting demonstration. As you can see here, I've got a simple object, some funky old whiskey bottle. And uh, I've got my canvas panel here, my palette, got my uh, large container of water to clean the brushes with, and then a smaller container of water to just be able to, you know, dip my brush in to extend the paint a little bit farther so that it's not uh, getting contaminated with the dirty water every time through. I'm just going to try an earth green for my color uh, right now. So I'm going to squeeze out a fair amount of that on the right side of the palette. And then let's find my white. There we go. So I'm going to squeeze out a decent amount of white also on the palette, and we're pretty ready to go. Now, a really simple thing. I talked to you guys just a little bit the other day about size uh, of the object that you put in your painting. But before you even consider that, there's a consideration of format. Do I go with a portrait orientation, or do I go with a landscape orientation? I know that sounds really simple, but a lot of people don't even think about it, just throw it up there and start painting. The subject in this particular painting is vertically oriented, so it makes sense for us to go with a vertical orientation. Now, in oil painting, you employ a technique called fat over lean. And what that means is you use increasingly thicker layers of paint as you develop the painting, but you start with it being very thin. So I'm going to take just a very small round brush because that's the only round that I have right here. And uh, when you're choosing the color that you're going to use in your painting, make sure you choose something that's a darker color so that you're able to get a nice range of values. So you can see here, I'm just kind of spreading it thin on the palette, uh, dipping a fair amount of water into it. And I'm going to go in and just really quickly kind of get the large, simple shape of this bottle. Just indicating it in a linear fashion. Now, one of the things I always talk to my students about is this concept of lines. It's really an abstract idea because we don't see lines in nature. What we do see, and what we use lines to do, we use lines to indicate where one plane meets another. But in my case here, I'm just getting the lines down so that I know I've got my vase on the canvas, or on the canvas panel in this case, and I've got it on pretty decent size. Uh, I'm already indicating where the shadows fall from this guy, and then I want to go ahead and indicate where the back of the table comes in. So that may be a little high. Let's bring that down just a little bit. You're never stuck with anything in a painting. You can always make changes and don't feel like you can't. Uh, so there, I've brought that down a little bit lower. I think that's a little better uh, placement for that. So I've got the basic shape. And I want to get the basic indication of where the shadow falls on it. Here we go. I may come over a little bit. See, I'm even in starting the painting, I'm already looking at doing a little bit of redrawing, if you will. Trying to get a better shape for it as I go along. Get things placed just a little bit better. Uh, you may notice that the paint is kind of running here. That's not something to worry about early on in your painting session. So you see I've got the object on the canvas fairly uh, simply indicated. And for your painting, you'll want to choose something that's pretty simple so that you're not struggling with just getting it drawn on there and trying to figure that out but you're just initially getting uh, the shape in. Now the first thing I want you to do is go in and paint the shadows. So you can see I've got a larger brush now and I'm gonna come in and just get a fair amount of paint 
again I'm thinning it quite a bit because we want to put thin layers down first and thicker layers down later but I'm going to start with where the shadows are on this face so they come along like so and come along here so I've got those shadows laid in on the that and then let's get a little bit of the shadow in on the uh, topper boom boom uh, the wall in the background is a little bit lighter than the shadow area but the shadow that it's casting down here is fairly dark so I want to go ahead and lay that in you remember I said the other day that we try to paint fast with big brushes and in doing so here I've already eliminated like the line between where the bottom of the vase is and where the shadow comes in lines as I started to discuss earlier are really are really an abstraction we don't really see lines we just use them to help us distinguish between where one form meets another okay so I'm still keeping things light. There's that kind of cool edge there to where the face dips in and come across like so. You know, I've just gone in and used line and put in some quick uh, value, the deep shadows, and I already have some form. You want your finished painting to look as three-dimensional as possible. So we start with the shadows and we'll come along and add lights as we go along. Now I've got the shadows on the form and the shadows that are being cast. The next thing that I want to do is get some tone in the background. Now I want the object itself to pop from the background and as I look at it and you look at the white on the face of it so to speak compared to the background you can see that the background gets darker than the object itself. So I'm going to mix just a little bit of white with that initial dark green that I was using and a little bit more white. Uh, I know some of you may have mixed paint using a palette knife in the past. I prefer to just go in, do the mixing with the brush, and have at it. So what I'm going to do here is I come in with that background color. I'm going to get rid of the line that I initially had determining and showing where the edge of this little vase or bottle was. So in developing a painting it's important to consider and to know that you know every part of the painting is important. You don't want to just spend all your time painting the bottle or the vase or what have you. You want to devote an equal amount of attention to the background. Okay, I like to say that no painting, no area of the painting is more important than any other area. Or you could say a painting is only as strong as its weakest area. So if you just slop the background in and, and don't really think about what tone it needs to be, or what value, meaning lightness or darkness, it needs to be, then your object is going to suffer. So I'm getting the background laid in, I'm removing the lines. And laying this color in. I don't know uh, how long the clock has been running now on my painting, but 
I do know that I've already got a really nice sense of light and volume to this bottle. Also realize my hand is casting a shadow over the painting as I'm doing this demo, so I may have to change the camera orientation in some future demos. Take your paint, take your color all the way to the edges of your panel. Don't leave an area unpainted. Now when I look at the background versus the foreground, specifically the table that this is sitting on versus the background, the table, at least as it goes back, is a little bit darker so I'm just going to add some of my green back in. And take it right up to where I get rid of that line that was there. And get rid of the line that was surrounding the vase. Okay, so I've got that. I'm not sure I like the table being darker, but I'm going to let it go for right now. I will have to come in and make my shadows on the table darker so that that pops a little bit more. And as the vase come, as the table comes forward, comes towards us, it gets a little bit lighter. So I can go ahead and let that come in a little bit lighter. And then you see here at the very front of it, I'm getting rid of the lines. So I've basically used two values in developing the painting to this point. One for the darkest shadows, which are going to go darker still. And then I've come in with kind of a mid-tone in places on the table and the background. What you'll notice is I have not painted the vase or the bottle at all, but the white, by contrast with everything that's around it, is already functioning as a light. It's standing out. You know, right here, right now, you can tell that the light direction is coming from the left, and you can tell that the bottle itself has volume. It's round, or, you know, it's three-dimensional. Uh, this guy is not perfectly round. If you had a bottle that you were drawing or painting here, and it was perfectly round, then you'd want to do some blending along this light to dark transition that you see here in mine, in this case, not so much. So you can take something that is like uh, a round bottle or vase. You can take something that's, you could take a little square cardboard box or something to paint if you wanted to do something simpler like that to allow you to have some success on this first painting up to you and where your comfort lay, uh, level lies right now. So I'm getting that shadow laid in again. I'm still not going quite as dark as I want to. I want to get that darker still. And then you notice if I just go over that I can blend this out somewhat. There we go. shadow on the side here. All right. Now I have not used the white on the object itself yet because I haven't needed to, have I? I'm just getting the simple shapes laid in. I'm not going to go super far with the little labels that you can see on on this thing like what you have right here notice how large the brush is that i'm using i don't want you to get picky with uh, your brush strokes i want you to do large simple shapes like this so now i'm going to go into my large water container and clean that large brush you want to keep a roll of paper towels or something nearby so that you can clean it 
nice and easily. So I've got, whoa, that was nearly a disaster. I guess y'all enjoyed that. All right, we'll see if that holds now. Learn my lesson. I propped the pallet up higher than I normally use it just so you could see it in the demo. Okay, so my brush is clean. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to get some nice clean white paint. And go ahead and paint this area. And see, as I paint, I can redefine edges. So you don't just draw and then say, okay, that's it. I'm stuck with whatever I put down. You can come in and continue to redraw even as you're laying in large shapes. Does that make sense? I hope so. So like here, I want to really hit that nice light that's coming in, and I want to put some stronger light on the label, even though it's a different color and looks darker. The thing that you want to consider is that the label is in the light, so you don't want it to be really dark at that point. And I don't know whether you can tell here right now, I'm starting to put the paint on a little bit thicker in the lights where I'm going over another color. If you put a color down and you're not happy with it, it's easier to cover it if you put the color on a little thicker. It's also easier to cover it if you're using a soft brush and you put the strokes on really gently. So you see I'm kind of turning the brush to get narrower or wider brush strokes as I need them, as opposed to just using a really small brush. Okay, now I want to revisit the shadow over here for a moment. Um, the darkest area of a shadow is not at the far edge. It's not over here. The darkest area of a shadow is actually somewhere in here before you get to the edge, and then things lighten up just a little bit as you get toward the edge because there's some reflected light in there. So... That's something that I want to uh, solve here momentarily. The white that I'm using is called ceramic white, and I didn't think about it before I squeezed it out, but this particular white is slightly transparent. So I may switch to something like a titanium like you guys are using that is a little more opaque. Opaque meaning it covers what's underneath where the transparent white, no matter how thick you put it on, it lets some of the lets some of the color underneath show. But that'll be good for working into that shadow. I'm mixing a little bit of green back into the uh, light color, and I'm just throwing a little bit of light along the edge here. It may confuse itself with the background a little bit, but I'll come in and solve that momentarily. I do kind of like how down here it's allowing the vase to separate from the uh, tabletop. So I've got clean color on there, and I'm going to come in and just kind of blend it out now. See how that blends and comes to the edge. Now, I want to just slightly get a little blend in here from the white 
into the deepest shadows so it's not such an abrupt edge there and see that starts giving me some nice transition tones in there i like how this recessed area on the face of the bottle you know kind of casts a little bit of a shadow so i'm trying to get that in there so just like that if i don't tip this over just like that i've got a pretty solid three-dimensional object um, i want this to go darker that green that i'm using is not really dark so i'm going to switch to a different green and see if i can get a little stronger darks so you don't need to do that just use one of your darker colors to begin with like uh maybe the thalo blue or prussian blue or if you've got a purple like the dioxazine purple that'll be nice and dark so use one of those colors the alizarin crimson is actually pretty dark oh yeah you can see now that's nice rich dark there and i'm going to carry that down and then I'm going to put the brush stroke. I'm not going to put the brush stroke on this way, but I'm going to put it onto the side. And I'll get a nice little line here where the bottle meets the table. Now I'm going to come in and reinforce that dark shadow. So, I'm going to get in and make some of my shadows up at the top, a little darker, like there, actually gets pretty dark at the top, like so, here. So, that's kind of a mess right there, but I'll clean that up by coming into the background again. kind of like how dramatic this is becoming you know while I'm just painting a white object largely I'm trying to give it some really strong values so one of your goals in doing this painting should be to have like a full range of value if uh, if zero is black and 10 is white i'd like to see you stretch everything to reach those values All right, i'm going to mix some white in with this green and try to get a little color in the background so that my whites really have something to pop against You see this particular green that I'm using now is more of a bluish green where the uh, one I started out with was an earth green. So, and now I'm going to try to kind of clean up that edge. Let's come straight down. And straight down like so. One thing that will help your paintings also is if you 
think about the mark direction that you're making. So when I'm on this back wall, I'm going to make vertical strokes that, you know, are basically indicating that that plane, that wall, is parallel to me as the artist, parallel to my picture plane. So even though I may mass it in real quickly with the side to side stroke, for the most part back here I want to use a vertical mark. Now where the background meets up against the bottle in the shadow, you may actually, I want to make this a little wider here first, yeah. you may actually lighten up your color somewhat back there. So that the shadow side you know, has something to bounce off against, so to speak. I need to get some more white out here in just a minute. But you see, I'm getting light shadow, three dimensionality. Background makes it pop against both the shadow and the light. And then I've got a slight difference in value between the tabletop and my background wall. Now let's find some whites. Let's see if this one's a little more opaque. Again, I'm making that label perfectly white because it's in the light. So if you have an object that has a lot of color to it, that's okay. Just think about if it's in the if it's in the light, I want to make it all light regardless of what color it is. I'll try and hit that label with a real strong white there. Reinforce the light up here. strong light there on the neck all right I'm really liking the way this is looking I think I still want to lighten slightly the background over on the right side. Look at how important it is what you do with the background for how it makes your vase or your bottle or your object look. Yeah, look at how that's making that shadow pop now. Again, I'm trying to like refine that edge every time I paint there. This going slightly light, lighter on one side of the background and leaving it a little darker on the other side was a favorite trick of a man you may have heard of named Rembrandt, one of the great Dutch painters. If you hear that buzzing, it sounds like they might be mowing my lawn right now. It's 
So I'm just going to let it blend out to that slightly darker side over here. But I don't want a real abrupt transition, so I'm kind of working my brush through that area of the painting. I think um, I think I'm going to leave the tabletop slightly darker than the background, especially toward the back, as we discussed earlier. Um, let's see what I can do here. A little bit darker. And you see, I bring that right up to this edge. trick here. The bottle itself, because it's so light and reflective, is actually putting a little bit of a reflection onto the table itself. So see I'm darkening these areas and I'm just going to leave A little bit of light here. I may throw some back into that. I'll leave a little bit of light there. There we go. Clean that shadow up. Wipe my brush off a little bit. And I'm going to put a little bit of white. down here where it's being reflected off the bottle itself. I think that's kind of fun. And I'll kind of blend that out so it's not just a real stark end to where that happens. Now this is the basics. Um, I've just come in and simply indicated the form and have that I think working pretty effectively. And you see as I drag my brush through the white and over the edge of the shadow I'm able to Get a little blending there going on and make that less of a less of a dramatic uh, transition you can actually clean your brush and just take a wet brush over the edge like that and you end up with a nice blended transition little bit of lightness there and then let it swim into the dark all right so this is day one painting one um, pick a simple object don't pick something with a lot of complexity to it because we're going to go there next um, but a simple object strong light on it Fill your canvas with it as much as you can. And then give me a strong range of value from the lightest lights to the darkest darks. And ideally, you want your lightest lights and darkest darks 
to be on the vase or the bottle. And I'm just going in with some white now, kind of cleaning up some edges. I like the way you get a pure white over on this side. I'm putting the paint on pretty thick. And notice, you know, I've gotten, you know, a decent amount of detail and information in this painting using only this large brush. All right, that was kind of fun. Uh, a cleanup note, never leave your brushes like that just sitting in the, uh, sitting in your uh, water. Because if you do that, your brush will end up with a permanent curve to it. You know, you'll take it out of the water and it'll stay like this all of the time. That's not something you want. So get your brush in the water, clean it out. You can clean your brush with just soap and water. If your brush has light bristles on it, you know, when even after you've cleaned it, you'll notice here the brush still has some green to it. I'm going to turn this. Well, I'm still getting a lot of glare, aren't I? Hopefully this looks good. I don't want to have to redo it, but... Uh, I hope you're able to see what I was doing there and make some sense out of today's painting. So let's take a look at it a little more straight on. And you see it against the face in the background. So Happy painting. I hope you have great success and I will see you with your completed painting on Tuesday.